right, so looking at these notes, this first equation with my ill-placed um, circle, that should say y equals 3x plus 2. And that is in what form? Slope intercept form. Thank you, Blaine. Yes. That is in slope intercept form. If you've been working on S6 through 9, then you are familiar with slope intercept form. When it's in that form, then we know the slope is that coefficient of x, and the 2, the constant, is the y-intercept. This second equation is not in slope-intercept form. It is in standard form. <coughs> so notice it's in standard form. The x and the y are on the same side. The constant's on the other side. You will not see fractions or decimals if it's truly in standard form. They're always going to be nice whole numbers. And if it's in standard form, the x has to be positive and it has to go first. Like, x is really picky in standard form. So, if we want to graph from standard form, we have some choices. Um, we could move it around to put it in slope-intercept form, but honestly, that's more work than we need to do most of the time. So, what we're going to do is we're going to find both the x and y intercept. Now, as we look at these, you will, um, we're going to do some like with graphs, and then it's going to make some more sense. So, we know that the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, right? So this is the point where it crosses the y-axis. So if you think about a graph, if I think about a graph, all of the points on this line, what do we know about the ordered pairs for all of the points on that line? Like if I were to, to say a, a point that's on this line, like this point right here, what would the ordered pair be? Zero, three, right? What about down there? Zero, negative two. So any point that's on the y-axis always has a zero for the x-coordinate, right? So any place on the y-axis, the x is always zero because it doesn't move side to side. So if any point on the y-axis has an x of zero, if I want to find the y-intercept, I can just replace the x with a zero. So this would be 3 times 0 plus 2y is 18. Now, what's 3 times 0? Zero? Zero. 0, right? So basically, this whole thing is just gone, and I'm left with 2y is 18. So I divide by 2, and I get that my y-intercept is 9. So for the x-intercept, the x-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, or the x-axis, my bad, where it crosses the x-axis. And that's this line, right? That's my horizontal axis. So any place on the horizontal axis, all of those points would have a number for x, but a zero for the y. Right? So if I think about some of these points, like this would be negative 3, 0. This might be 7, 0. But they would all have zeros. So if I want to know for this same equation, the equation was 3x plus 2y is 18. If I put a 0 in for the y, if that's zero, what's two times zero? Zero, right? So basically, this is just gone. And I have an equation that says 3x equals 18. 
divide by 3, and I know my x-intercept is at 6. And if I were making this graph, my y would be way up here at 9, and my x would be out here at 6, and then I could just connect the dots. So we're going to look at some on the next page where we have the graph. Oh, my bad. It's going. Hold on. Maybe it's not. Mm, let's try. Nope. Nope. That didn't do it. So we're going to go through a few more of these. So if I want the y-intercept, we're letting the x be 0. And usually what I have done is I just make myself a big giant zero when I did it on dry erase. And I put that big zero on top of the one that's gone. Zero. All right. So if I put a big zero for the y-intercept, if I want the y-intercept, then the x is the one that gets the zero. So if this is 0, what does my equation become? It just becomes negative 2y equals 12. So if I want the y-intercept, I ignore the x because it's 0, and I solve this little equation, which should be a little equation you could just do in your head. You're just dividing. So negative 6. And I could, if I want, I could put that on the graph now. It's the y-intercept, so it's going to go on the y-line. So it's down here at negative 6. For the x-intercept, I go back to that original equation. If it's the x-intercept, then I know that the y is going to be the one that's 0. So if the y is 0, then this whole part would be gone because 0 times 2 is 2 is 0. 3x minus 0 would just be 3x. So this is just 3x is equal to 12. Divide by 3. Good, Blaine. It's 4. So then that's the x-intercept, so it goes on the x line. And then all I need to do is connect and extend, and there's my line. So I should connect with a straight line, put some arrows on the end, because this goes on and on forever. So, um, my last teacher that I had mm -hmm. taught us that she was such a stickler about the line being perfectly straight. Are you like that? I mean, it should go through those two points. She made us use rulers. Okay, I have rulers, okay. yes. I was wondering if you were so, like... We've made some lines last Thursday in this class, and I gave everybody rulers, but you want here? Okay. You can also, your, um, your ID makes a nice straight edge. It's about the right size for our graphs, too. So when you're doing the IXL lessons, it's nice because it automatically makes the line. Okay. I kind of missed my dot here, so I'm not going to expect more of you than I would do myself. But I should not see things that look like this. Oh, come on. So I should not see, like, only these two things with no extension. No, that's not acceptable. And I should not see, like, this, and then it goes like that. Like, way off. I mean, like, come on. Like, at least try. I don't really have a good way to use a ruler on here, so, but make an effort. It should be a straight line, yes. And it should extend through your graph, not just, I made a couple notes on some homework that I gave back. I did not take off points, but I did make some notes saying, like, extend your lines. So I didn't give you as much to write down here, but it's still the same process. If I'm finding the y-intercept, the x is 0. So if the x is 0, 
It's gone, right? 5 times 0 is 0. So this would just be 2y is 10. So you're just doing 10 divided by 2 is 5. And that's the y-intercept. So you're going to stick 5 on the y-line, on the y-axis. And if I want to know the x-intercept, then it's the y that becomes 0. So I would have 5x is 10. Divide by 2, or divide by 5, and we get to nothing like recording to make sure that I make like 5 times as many mistakes. So if I connect and extend, I should probably extend a little more. There we go. And, and no, my line is not perfectly straight, but I'm going to give it a pretty good effort. If you're just asked to graph the line, you don't necessarily need to write the ordered pairs down, but you would be going through the same process. When you divide by the y, it gets you on the y. There's nothing magical about doing the x or the y first. So 56 divided by negative 8 would be negative 7. And 56 divided by 7 would give me positive 8 for the x. So I did these two little equations. Oops. Oh my goodness, there we go. I did negative 8y is 56 and 7x is 56. So when I divide by the one with the x, someone, some people will do that first. 56 divided by 7, you can do that first, but make sure you put it on the x line. And 56 divided by negative 8, and you do need to use the negative, gives us negative 7 and that's going to be on your y line. If we see just whole numbers, 